Hey, what's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new single board computer for 2020. Now this is not an ARM based single board computer. This is the Odyssey x86 J4105. It's powered by an Intel J4105 CPU, quad core 1.5 gigahertz with a burst up to 2.5. Now this is a very interesting board. It's coming in from Seed. And I've also seen this board marketed as the Recomputer, but here we're calling it the Odyssey. There are a couple of versions of this for sale. One comes with Windows 10 Enterprise and one comes with no operating system at all. But keep in mind, this is an x86 CPU, so any x86 compatible operating system will install. Windows, Linux, Android x86, and some of our favorite Linux emulation distros like Botocera. So inside of the box, you're going to receive the user manual and obviously you'll receive the board itself. It is marked Recomputer here. I wasn't sure if it would be or not. Everything's looking pretty good here. We got that big heatsink on the bottom with the fan, USB-C, USB 3.1, dual Ethernet. It even has an M.2 slot on it. We'll definitely take a look at the full specs, but first up, let me get these accessories out of the box. So on the storage side of things, this has 64 gigabytes of eMMC 5.1 built in, but it does come with a SATA drive adapter so we can add hard drives and SSDs to this very easily. We have the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennas, a CMOS battery, a couple different power outlet ends for the power supply. And finally, the power supply itself. This is 12 volts, 2 amps with a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack to power the board up. The version of the board that I received does have Windows 10 Enterprise pre-installed on the internal eMMC, so that's what we're going to be going with in this video. But I will be doing a Linux install on this and a full review with a Linux distro. Let me know what you want to see running on this in the comments below. Before we go any further, I just want to give you a quick size comparison between some other popular single board computers. In the top left, we have the Jetson Nano, followed by the Latte Panda Alpha, the Odroid N2, and finally the Raspberry Pi 3B+. As you can see, the Odyssey is bigger than the Raspberry Pis are going to be, but we're pretty much on par with the other boards here. Now, the footprint of the Odyssey is bigger than any other board on the table here, but not by much. So taking a closer look at the Odyssey, we have one USB 3.1 port on the front. We also have a single USB Type-C port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. This will do microphone and headphone. It's a combo connector, a micro SD card slot and a SIM card slot. And this will only be enabled if you add a 4G module to the M.2 slot on the top of the board. Moving around back, going from the left to the right, we have our power button. And this also doubles as an LED indicator, our power input, dual gigabit ethernet, full-size HDMI port, and two USB 2.0 ports. The board itself is jam-packed with features. We also have a 28-pin Arduino header, a 40-pin Raspberry Pi header, dual M.2 slots. We have a key B and a key M. And over on the right-hand side, we have a full-size SATA connector, so we can add different hard drives to this very easily. It does come with the adapter included in the kit. And when I flip the unit over, you'll notice it has a massive aluminum heatsink with that built-in fan. This should definitely keep that Celeron processor pretty cool. So as you can see, they've added tons of I.O. to this board. We have that dual gigabit Ethernet. We have dual M.2 slots, key M and key B. We can add an M.2 SSD and an adapter for, let's say, 5G or just another Wi-Fi adapter. But it does have dual band AC Wi-Fi built in and Bluetooth 5.0 from the factory. If you want to check this out in more detail, I will leave links to the website in the description. They have the full specs listed. But now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. In my opinion, the most important part about these single board computers, the CPU, GPU, and RAM. So as for the CPU, this has the Intel Celeron J4105, a quad core CPU at 1.5 gigahertz with a burst up to 2.5. Now from within the BIOS, you can change the wattage on this from 5 to 15. The GPU is the built-in Intel HD 600 up to 750 megahertz, but we do have that extra M.2 slot and I will be doing a full video trying to add an external GPU to this, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. I've successfully done it on several other x86 based single board computers and I got a feeling it will work here. 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM at 2400 megahertz, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, now that's that eMMC 5.1, it's pretty fast. But we do have an M.2 slot that we can add an SSD to, plus we have the SATA connector. And as for connectivity, dual band AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and dual gigabit Ethernet. Now I'll go ahead and tell you right off the bat that this is not going to be as powerful as the Latte Panda Alpha, but it will be a bit more powerful than the Latte Panda Delta. 
I'm super excited to see what this thing can do. And like I mentioned, I will be running Windows 10 Enterprise here, but keep an eye out on the channel because I'm going to be testing some Linux distros and Android on this same board. All right, so here we are. Everything went off without a hitch. I just booted it up and I was brought right to the desktop. It's already set up as re-computer. Like I mentioned, this is running Windows 10 Enterprise 64-bit. We have the J4105 CPU, 8 gigs of RAM, and it is in dual channel mode, as you can see over here. 64 gigabytes of internal storage and the Intel UHD 600 graphics. So I did install a bunch of stuff. I ran a lot of tests. Let's see how this thing really performs. So first up, I ran Geekbench 5. Single core, 420. Multi, 1442. Definitely not top of the line, but for a low-end CPU, it's not doing too badly. Next on the list, Cinebench R20. Now this is definitely not a computer that you want to buy for rendering or video editing, but you could do it. It would take a lot longer than a more powerful system. We scored a 518 here pretty much right underneath the i5-5300U, and that scored a 541. I ran a quick speed test on the internal 64 gigabytes of storage. Remember, you do have SATA support and M.2 SSD support, but this is the internal 64 gigs. Not too shabby here, 316 on the read, 225 on the right. Moving over to the built-in GPU, we're better than 2% of all results. This is 3D Mark Night Raid, graphic score, 2,288, CPU score, 1,125. And finally, I ran a quick real-world Wi-Fi test. Download, 200 megabits per second, upload 22. My home network maxes out at 250 down and 30 up, so this is not bad at all from that dual-band Wi-Fi. And if I would have gone Ethernet with this, it would have just maxed out my whole system. We do have gigabit Ethernet built in. So far, the usability of the Odyssey as an everyday PC works out pretty great. I mean, it loads up web pages pretty fast. You could check your email. You can check the news. You can do pretty much anything you need online with this little machine here. Now, let's go ahead and check out some video playback. We'll go with a 4K video and see how it does streaming 4K. So far, not bad. We do have 25 drop frames, but that could be from loading. We're at a viewpoint of 1080p, but the video itself is playing at 4K. So I'd say it'll do 4K streaming from Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, or any of your favorite websites pretty well. I also wanted to test out some native 4K video playback. We have the same video, 4K, 60 FPS. We're just going to use the stock player here. Super smooth. We can see right here when we're coming down through the trees. Looking great here, and this chip is more than capable of 4K video playback. Now before I move on to the gaming test, I do want to mention that nowhere on their website is this touted as a gaming machine, but we still got to test it out here with some lower end stuff. First up, we'll go with Rocket League. 720p, very low settings, we're getting an average of 24 FPS. And remember, I do have that CPU at 15 watts, so we're getting the max performance we can, at least out of the CPU. Next up, CSGO, very low, 720p, we're getting an average of 33 to 34 FPS. And this is actually better than I thought it would be after seeing Rocket League, but still, nowhere near a gaming machine. Next, we have Dauntless, very low, 720p, and I did set the resolution scaling to half. We're only averaging 18 FPS, and we're not even in battle yet, so this really isn't going to work out for newer titles. But I'm pretty sure we'll have good luck with emulation on this device. So on the emulation side of things, I will be doing a full-blown video with a Linux distribution like Batocera, but for Windows, here we are with ReDream, the Dreamcast emulator. This is Dead or Alive 2, 1920 by 1440, running beautifully. 
This is one of the harder games to emulate with ReDream on these lower end chips, but we're doing really good and we're upscaled to 1920 by 1440. So as long as the game's compatible with the ReDream emulator, this board's gonna run it. Next up, we have some PSP emulation using PPSSPP. This is Tekken Dark Resurrection, and I'm only sitting at 2x resolution with this one, but I'm pretty sure we could have went up to 3 with these Tekken games. But since I'm here, I figured I'd test out God of War Chains of Olympus also. 2x resolution, running really good on this little board. By the way, I'm using the Vulcan back end here. And finally, at least for this video, the Dolphin Emulator, Super Mario Sunshine. This was actually pretty surprising here. I went with this game at first because as soon as you get through that tutorial stage and get where we are right now, it's all downhill on these lower end chips. But as you can see, this little board is handling it pretty well. Now we're at 30 FPS and that's the original frame rate of this on the original GameCube. So it's looking pretty decent here. Now keep in mind, I will have another video coming up with full emulation test. If there's something you want to see running on this board, let me know in the comments below. So my first impressions of the Odyssey single board computer are pretty good. Now it's definitely a lower end x86 chip, you're not going to be running high end video games on this. But we do have that extra M.2 slot and it's running at x4 speed, so if I add an external GPU we could get some pretty good frame rates out of everything that I tested here. But one thing that's going to turn a lot of people away from this board is the price. It starts at $188 with no onboard storage or operating system and it goes up to around $250 with onboard storage and Windows Enterprise pre-installed. Even with all the I.O. built in and the onboard Arduino, I still think it's a bit pricey because I can get on eBay and pick up an Optiplex with an i5-4590 for around 100 bucks and add a pretty decent GPU to it and destroy this thing in performance on the GPU and the CPU side. But it's not a single board computer like the Odyssey is. This pulls a lot less power and the form factor is just right. So in the end, it's really up to you if you're going to pick one of these up or not. But either way, I'm going to leave links to Seed Studios in the description. If you want to learn more, you can go over there and check it out. And definitely keep an eye on the channel because I'm going to be wiping this and installing Linux. Now, one thing that I want from you guys is to let me know which distro I should test first. We have tons to choose from. MX, Manjaro, Stock Ubuntu, Zorin. I mean, there's tons to choose from. So if you want to see a specific operating system running on this board, let me know in the comments below. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. This was just kind of an overview of the new Odyssey board, and I was really interested to see how it performed with Windows, and overall, it's really not that bad for a small, low-powered single-board computer. Like I mentioned, keep an eye on the channel because I have more videos coming up. But like always, thanks for watching.